Hey guys, Mike Montanari, Fast Monty's Garage. Welcome back. So today we're going to talk about a very common issue we have with a carbureted car. And that's, why does my car not want to start after it's been sitting for a week or so? Well, there's a very simple answer for that. And today we're going to go over the reasons why and how I solve the problem. So, why does that happen? Two reasons. One reason is when we look at a carburetor, there are, on most carburetors, there's a front and rear bowl. That bowl stores fuel for the carburetor to pump into the manifold. Now, if it sits too long, that fuel can evaporate. But the number one problem that we see is if the car's been sitting for a while, the fuel will actually drain itself out of here, go down the fuel line, back into the fuel tank because the carburetor is higher than the fuel tank. So this line will actually drain a fuel. So when you're sitting there and you're cranking and cranking and cranking, your mechanical fuel pump is trying to pump that fuel up this line, fill the bowls so it have, the bowls have enough to um, charge the jets to get pumped into the airstream to fire those cylinders. So the problem with that is if you're cranking too long, you can actually start doing some damage. Now, it's, it's minor, but over time, you'll have some engine oil starvation issues, right? Because your oil pump is not fully charging the system because it's just, you're relying on the starter, not the actual engine RPM to get the pump going. So your lifters, if you have hydraulic lifters, they'll lose oil they'll, they'll bleed down faster which means you have more axial play and you can hear your engine clacking uh, the other thing that can happen is your bearings uh, will have less oil than needed again these are minor issues but still can be annoying over time now those of you that saw me first fire the engine here's the video check it out when i first fired it i actually said in the video i'm going to prime my carburetor the reason is I have an electric fuel pump to do exactly that. With cars been sitting, I don't drive this every day. If it's been sitting too long, I'll use that electric fuel pump to pump up the bowls. And then when I start the car, it starts immediately. Okay, so we're going to go over what I did for the electric fuel pump. So you guys can do that as well if you want. Uh, the other thing we can do, which is a more simple solution, is you can get a check valve. Okay, so the check valve can go somewhere in your fuel line to prevent that fuel from going back into the gas tank. So that'll keep fuel here so you'll be cranking less. So, now that being said, when I put that electric pump in, I didn't realize something. And that is because I also have a mechanical pump. I have a a Carter mechanical pump. It does not have a fuel return line. That's another thing I'll talk about. So I, what I didn't realize is if I turn that electrical pump off while I'm driving, the mechanical pump is trying to suck fuel through the, uh, um, the impeller of the electrical pump and it degrades its performance. So I was accelerating one time and the fuel bowls ran out of fuel because the mechanical pump couldn't suck through that electrical pump very quickly. So today, that's what I'm going to fix using the check valve I just mentioned. So I'm going to go to the workbench and draw a little diagram of what we're going to do and to explain a little bit more about the draining situation and where to put a check valve, etc., etc. And we'll go from there. Be right back. All right, guys, here's the gist. Carburetor, engine, fuel tank. And somewhere on your block, depending on your engine, you have a mechanical fuel pump. So you have a, a fuel line coming from your carburetor to the fuel pump and the fuel pump to the fuel tank. So water, I mean, sorry, not water, fuel will actually self-drain itself into the fuel tank. So you can put a check valve anywhere you want. You can put it here, you can put it here, you can put it here. And a check valve is really simple. Carter makes one. It looks like that. So I got some barb fittings I can put in each end and then you can put your fuel line on it with some hose clamps. Uh, so in my situation, after the fuel tank, 
I basically have a fuel pump so it's pumping fuel in from the tank all the way to the engine the problem is when this is off if I want to turn it off remember I just started filming car rides and you can hear the pump at at idle and I kind of wanted to turn it off and so what we need to do is I need to tee off of here put a check valve in here here's my little check valve so I need to put a T or a Y connector here and here and a check valve here so a check valve doesn't allow fuel to flow backwards so if we're pumping and we're adding pressure the fuel can't go back into the tank because the check valves there if this is off the fuel any liquid will go in the path of least resistance which should be through the check valve around the pump because there's an impeller here that's blocking that flow so that's my plan today is I'm gonna add these Y connectors and a check valve if you guys do not have an electric pump you can do the same process using the check valve to put into your fuel line so let's get under the car and I'll show you exactly where I mounted my fuel pump and what I did to, to put it there before we get under the car I want to show you up close and personal so there's basically two fittings for this guy these are quarter inch MPT to a 3 8 barb and then two 3 inch 3 8 inch barb tees and as I'm pulling these out I just realized I don't have any fuel hose <laughs> so I gotta go run to the auto parts store and get some hose and uh, I'll meet you guys under the car alright guys here's the fuel pump I told you about so this is a Carter uh, fuel pump it only pumps about 8 psi which is all you need for a carburetor most other pumps you have to be careful they're gonna pump 60 psi that's for fuel injection so this is a six pound pump and you can see the inlet outlet the wiring and this goes to my center console it's switched to um, switched power so I have to have the key turned in the ignition and then I have a toggle switch and then that you can see it's grounded right there on the body so in order to get in here and play around I have to jack up the body of the car so I'm just gonna jack up the body of the car leave the tires of the rear axle on the ground and that'll give us uh, some elbow room to play with and I can start cutting lines up so uh, I'll be right back okay guys so I have the car jacked up and I know it looks like a rat's nest but here's the the hose coming from the tank into the goes around and goes into the pump this is the outlet of the pump it goes straight to the fuel line so we just basically need to bypass the pump so I got to figure out a place where we can put a T so I'm thinking right here and just loop it right to here all right guys so I went ahead and put the the T's on and I figured out which direction and it's really easy just blow in one end and it's very easy to open that valve and you can't blow in the other way so having said that I'm gonna double check we want to go here and there just like that so I'm gonna put some tape tape on the hose and put a little cut line I have a little drip cup I'm actually going to be using PVC cutters because they basically cut anything. Well, I can smell it. Man, that's nasty. So I'll go ahead and put my hose clamps on in the direction where I can tighten them. Look at my arrows. My arrows are in the right direction. All right, one done. And let's double check. Alright, I'm good right there. I'm going to move my line to about right there. Cool. Got my hose clamps on and get that T in there. Alright, alright. I love it. Alright guys, I think we're good to go. I am going to go ahead and get in the car. 
and turn the pump on so you're going to hear it and we're just going to basically check for leaks let me get the camera probably in a better position to, to check that out all right guys i'm going to start it up and see what happens <laughs> How'd we do guys? Did it leak? Nice. Now I'll have to do a little road test. Hey guys. So, I think it's time to test drive. It's the next day. Um, the engine is cold. And, you know, yesterday we ran the pump. So, by this time, some of the fuel is drained out. And I'll show you what I do. So the plan is, turn on the pump. You're going to hear the pump. It pumps up the carburetor, two pumps of the uh, gas pedal, and it should fire immediately. That's the plan. <laughs> then we're going to go on a test drive, and uh, once the car is warmed up, I'll, well actually before that, I'll turn the pump off, and I don't know if we're going to be able to hear the pump over the microphone or not, um, but I'll definitely let you guys know when I turn it off, and we'll go from there. So kick back. Enjoy the, the lovely sound of a Pontiac 467. Here we go. So, pumping, you can hear the pump. Two, two pumps of the pedal. Starts right up. Alright guys, so the car is getting warm, um, I don't know if you can hear the pump or not, but I'm going to turn it off. Okay, so the pump's off, I'm just going to drive around town and see if we uh, fall on our face, they call it. So here we go. I just ripped through the gears there and there was no no hesitation they usually it used to fall on its face when the when the pump wasn't on so pretty nice hey guys I thought that was awesome that the trick worked so I have the bypass in there so I can turn off the fuel pump so when I'm just cruising I don't have to worry about it but I have to if I have to send it, I don't have to worry about the fuel pump. That's awesome. So the fuel pump now can be used to prime the bowls of the carburetor so I can start immediately. Uh, if you guys want to implement that, go for it. I highly recommend it. Again, the check valve, if you just want to use the check valve method, I would put it right above your mechanical fuel pump because that will allow enough volume in that fuel line to get into the carburetor when you go to start it up. And, uh, oh, one more thing. You guys, if you haven't subscribed, do so because there's a surprise coming in the next couple of videos. I cannot wait. It's a long time coming. It's a secret. I know a couple of you probably figured it out already from hints from prior videos, but I'm super excited about it because it's just going to give us some more power, more fun, better starting, and um, it's a significant upgrade. So you're going to like that video series. So you guys know the drill. Build them fast and drive them faster. See ya.